I am finally getting to spend the whole day with Huawei's folding Mate X. And as a photographer for CNET, one of the things I am most interested in is how well this thing takes photos. So I'm going to hit the streets of Paris and find out. The Mate X has three main cameras, a standard 40 megapixel lens, a 16 megapixel ultra wide lens, and an 8 megapixel telephoto zoom. It's basically the same setup Huawei put on its flagship P30 Pro, a phone that I found to take excellent photos. The cameras are all found on a raised ridge on the back of the phone, and as it doesn't get covered up when it's folded, you can use them whether it's in phone or tablet mode. I mean, I don't want to look like one of those guys taking photos with a tablet, so I think I'm probably going to take most of the shots in phone mode. I started at the Grand Opera House in the heart of Paris, where I immediately found the benefit of those different zoom lengths. This is actually a really good place to start because obviously the building itself looks great, but as you can see, at the one times normal zoom, we're not quite getting all of the building in, so it's a good opportunity to hit the wide angle lens and suddenly we've got this huge scene in front of us and we could snap away. Exposure looks good, although some of the fine details in the building do look a little bit mushy. To capture those, I switched to the zoom lens, which let me get up close on the intricate golden details on the building with significantly better image quality. And even standing from here, I can't see that particularly well, so it's good to have that zoom. Even having a look at the picture on the phone screen, it looks like there's tons of detail. We can zoom in and we can even see that mesh netting. I can barely see that with my own eye. Leaving the beautiful opera house behind, I hit the streets of Paris, phone in hand, to see what else I can photograph to put it to the test. So it's got the AI mode that Huawei's got on almost all of its most recent flagship phones, and it recognizes the scene that you're taking a photo of and hopefully optimizes the settings. And weirdly, I found that as I was taking a photo of this, it recognizes bicycle. Now, on the one hand, I'm really pleased that it can recognize an object like that. On the other hand, I don't really know what settings it's going to change to help me get a better shot of a bike parked up like this. But there we go, let's try it anyway. Further on, I spy this metro sign and tried zooming in using the aperture mode to create a nice out of focus effect of the background. There's a fourth lens on the back which captures depth information to create these nice bokeh effects around a subject and it's worked really well here. The sign has been very neatly removed from the background and I think it's a really nice shot overall. Here I use the 5x zoom mode inside this alley to get a shot of these great shop signs, the old fashioned lights and the Christmas decorations. Yeah, that's a beautiful shot. Okay, snap that. I do like this shot, although the low light inside the alleyway has meant the image isn't pin sharp and there's quite a lot of noise, particularly on the Bistro 70 sign in the foreground. I love the exposure and the contrast in this street scene. It has a lovely filmic quality to it and there's plenty of detail as well. I kept snapping away as I roamed further around Paris, swapping between the lenses to try and find some interesting compositions that not only test the phone, but also tell a nice story of the long walk we were on. So as we found on Huawei's previous phones, and in fact most phones generally these days, there is a portrait mode on this which gives you that attractive out of focus area around your subject. And here's our subject. So we're going to bring the phone up, go into portrait mode, and take our shots. There we go, we'll take a few more. Uh, we can see that the face is still sharp, but it looks like the trees are confusing it a little bit. What I didn't realize though, is that the phone does more background processing after it's taken the shot to neaten things up, and the resulting images are actually extremely impressive. The cutout of the subject from the background is pretty much perfect, even around his hair, which is always a tricky thing for a phone camera to do. All of the background is beautifully out of focus, giving this the look of an image taken from a proper DSLR. Okay, so we've got a few options, and we'll take a look at the best one later on. After our stop for some portraits, we carried on to find a food market and had some pretty epic sandwiches made up. I like the amount of detail and the good exposure on this shot taken from the standard lens, and switching to the super wide mode helped capture more of the action. And speaking of action, my next stop was a square dominated by local skateboarders, a perfect opportunity to try out the burst mode. I found a skater willing to show off his skills for the camera, and by pressing and holding the shutter button, I was able to fire off loads of images, selecting the best bit of action afterwards. I like this shot. 
The skater is pin sharp and I've been able to capture him right at the height of his trick. As night started to fall, we headed towards a good viewpoint over the city, spoiled somewhat by the pretty miserable grey winter weather. But as day transitioned firmly into night, I headed back onto the streets to shoot some more. Huawei's previous phones like the P30 Pro and the P20 Pro before it have really impressed with their night skills and the Matex is no exception. Night shots are bright with accurate colours and very little noticeable image noise. Even from just a day's hands-on, I'm impressed with the quality of the cameras on the Mate X. I'm confident that this phone isn't just a folding gimmick, but it also has the skills elsewhere to keep pace with today's other flagship phones.